I have never considered myself very loving. So when I got married seven years ago, it marked the end of my relationships with women, except of course for my wife. When I placed the wedding ring on the finger of my chosen one, I understood clearly that this was my choice, that she was my better half and my last love. I had never been so sure. But life has its own plans for us without asking permission. After the wedding, we began to live separately, although my wife's mother had a nice house in the suburbs where she lived alone. My wife's parents' life wasn't going well, and her father decided that his wife would raise their daughter alone. I don't judge his decision, but I still hear the pain in my wife's voice when she talks about her father. A year into our marriage, my wife surprised me with the news that we were going to be parents in the near future. I literally carried her in my arms, never wanting to leave her alone for a moment. I would run to the store in the middle of the night when my beloved needed to eat pickled herring with sugar or smell shoe polish. My wife told her mother how I took care of her, and from my mother-in-law I received only approval and kind words. Sometimes, I wondered if my beloved mother-in-law praised me many times more than my beloved wife. But I attributed it to my wife's pregnancy and her constant mood swings and complaints. Three months after I found out I was going to be a father, my wife, and I went for a routine ultrasound. When the doctor asked us if we knew we were expecting twins, I literally jumped around the doctor's office like a child, screaming with joy. My beloved, on the other hand, covered her face with her hands, and I understood from her ambiguous sobs that she was crying. She was in shock. She hadn't expected twins. She wandered around the apartment repeating, What are we going to do? How will we live? I couldn't comfort her. It took a full three days before my wife stopped crying and decided to go to her mother's house to tell her the news in person rather than shocking her over the phone. All this time, I knew Angelica to be a very polite and reserved woman. But when we told her about our pregnancy and the fact that there would be two babies, she erupted like a volcano. She laughed, she cried, but her tears were warm and kind. She was genuinely happy and even began to refer to herself as a high-heeled grandma since she was still working at the time. Then she threw a joke at me that completely erased the boundaries between us. To be honest, Lucas, I was beginning to think your gun was out of bullets and your ammunition was blanks. I hadn't laughed so hard in a long time. I proudly replied that all I needed was a target and I'd hit it. Surprisingly, all three trimesters passed quickly. My wife gave birth to the most beautiful babies that we named James and Evelyn. We had a family meeting and it was decided that my mother-in-law would help us for the first month. She took a leave of absence from work and moved into our apartment. That's when all hell broke loose. My wife got very nervous and irritable. She kept saying that she no longer felt like a woman and that she was nothing more than food for our twins. My mother-in-law tried to calm them down, but it only led to conflicts. The twins took turns sleeping. For a month, there was never a moment when they both fell asleep at the same time. I went to work as if it were a holiday. There, despite the pile of papers and the pile of tasks, I could somehow relax. My mother-in-law also confessed that she was dreaming of going back to work soon. Meanwhile, the month was coming to an end and Angelica had to leave us and go back to work. My wife struggled tremendously. She became increasingly aggressive and indifferent. Sometimes she would lock herself in the bathroom to avoid hearing the baby's cries. Understanding that my wife couldn't cope, I began working remotely and taking care of the children during the day. This went on for 10 months, and I thought it couldn't get any worse. But then the kids started walking. I felt like a zookeeper or a supervisor on a conservation project, trying to save an endangered species. While James tried to put something in the toilet, 
Evelyn washed her hands in the same toilet. When Olivia fell asleep, James felt it his duty to poke his sister with his finger. In short, we struggled. We began to take our anger and exhaustion out on each other, and the fights began. Once, when my mother-in-law came to visit and heard our latest argument, my wife and I received a scolding that I will remember for the rest of my life. Angelica was stern and very determined. I enjoyed submitting to her. A short time later, my life took a complete turn. My wife stopped feeding the children and decided to go back to work. I continued to work remotely. To make things easier, including financially, we stopped renting an apartment and all moved into my mother-in-law's house. My wife left for work early and came home late. She practically only saw the children and me when they were asleep. She decided to devote herself to work and, it must be said, achieve quite good results. She became cold and indifferent to me. I felt it, but still the man in me took over, and when everyone was asleep, I literally begged her for my 10 minutes of conjugal duty. With my mother-in-law, it was much easier. We spent time together, raised the kids, had tea, went for walks, watched TV together. I began to notice that I liked her smell. It was somehow intoxicatingly smart and very attractive. When she went for a walk in tight jeans, I couldn't take my eyes off her rear end, which swayed slightly as she walked. One day, Angelica was cleaning the floors and I was walking, absorbed in my phone. It happened that we bumped into each other. She was facing away and I was facing forward. I immediately felt a desire that was clearly visible. To my surprise, my mother-in-law ran her hand through her hair and gently bit her lip. I didn't know how to interpret this and decided to pretend that nothing had happened. The next day, we were preparing dinner together and I dropped a knife on the floor. My mother-in-law bent down to pick it up and in doing so, the neckline of her blouse sagged and I saw her lingerie barely covering her breasts. I again felt a rush of desire for everything and couldn't hide it. Is there anything you want to tell me? My mother-in-law asked. I'm afraid I'll say too much, I replied, barely holding myself back. Or maybe I want you to say too much, she quietly told me. I started acting like a teenager, shifting from foot to foot and then I just said that I felt like the children were crying. But then my wife returned from a business trip and confessed to me that she had cheated on me with her boss. To say that I was deeply upset would be untrue. In a way, I was even glad because morally I had already been unfaithful to my wife, but only with her own mother. We decided that as long as the children were young, we would pretend to be a happy family and in a few years, we would decide how to proceed. It was a chilly day outside. My wife left for another business trip. I was home alone with the children, and my mother-in-law was visiting a friend. After putting my twins to bed, I was watching TV. My mother-in-law came back late at night, cheerful and slightly tipsy. She had gone out without an umbrella, and she was soaked through, I saw that she was shivering. I started helping her remove her coat, wet blouse, and, before I knew it, she stood before me in just her underwear. This is wet too, she said, and effortlessly removed everything. We spent the entire night together, one of the best nights of my life. My desired mother-in-law was truly mine that night, and in the morning, I woke up alone. There was a note on the table that said everything that happened was a mistake. It was a result of wine, and nothing more. This should stay between us. I'm going to stay with my sister. Your children are old enough to go to daycare. You'll manage without me. I'll tell my daughter that I'm taking care of a sick sister. Don't call me or mention what happened. I threw the note away but I can't erase one of the best nights of my life from my mind, for years have passed. 
we got divorced. And to our surprise, the children took it quite calmly. My ex-wife often takes them to the seaside, to the house of her new husband, her former boss. To be honest, I don't regret it one bit. In my mind, it's her mother and that night. I know it's all wrong, but I can't help it.